Hello, and welcome to the Governance Blueprint series. My name is John Landgrave, and I'm a Power Platform Architect at Microsoft. In the last episode of this series, we looked at considerations for creating your enterprise environment strategy. In this episode, we'll look at your primary tool for monitoring, managing, and governing your Power Platform tenant. The first step in implementing your strategy will be to create the environments, data policies, security groups, and other assets as defined in your strategy, and begin adding makers and users to the appropriate environments. However, many organizations choose to allow users to begin extending Office in the default environment before they implement their full environment strategy. In this episode, we'll not only look at the basic steps for creating non-default environments, but we'll also discuss how the COE Starter Kit can help you manage and maintain the default environment, Dataverse for Teams environments, and the non-default environments used to execute your environment strategy. The process for implementing your non-default environments is fairly straightforward. You'll add the environment in the Power Platform Admin Center. You'll then assign a security group to that environment so that you can add different roles like maker and user to other users in your organization for them to consume the environment. If this environment should not follow the same policies as the default environment, you'll need to exclude this environment from the default policy and then add the environment to a new policy, either one exclusive to this environment or policy designed for all environments of this type. So you've configured your default tenant, you've begun to use Dataverse for Teams environments, and now you have your non-default environments configured for users and makers, and you set up areas for test and production use. How do you keep track of all the environments, the users, the apps, the flows, the processes that are running? That's what the COE Starter Kit is for. The COE Starter Kit is maintained on GitHub and is available to any enterprise who wants to download, install, maintain, and update a set of tools and processes that help them manage the Power Platform environment. There are four main areas where the COE Starter Kit will help you. First, it provides a complete and accurate inventory of every asset that's been created in your Power Platform tenant. In addition, you can monitor these assets. So for example, see how long it's been since an app has been launched or, that, or a flow has been executed. We also provide you with detailed reporting in the form of a Power BI dashboard in which you can not only view different aspects of the platform, but can actually begin executing processes like archiving unused apps or flows. And finally, the starter kit includes a set of out-of-band processes. These are processes that manage various aspects of the platform and can be set to run automatically, only alerting you when an exception has occurred or when an event requiring an administrator's attention has occurred. Let's take a look at the Power BI dashboard included as part of the COE starter kit. This is the COE Starter Kit dashboard. You'll notice it's broken into three areas, which also represent the three different sets of applications and flows that you can install to support them. The Monitor section shows you the inventory of all the applications, flows, and other assets that have been installed or created as part of your tenant. The Govern section shows you all the different processes you can instantiate from within the toolkit that allow you to monitor and maintain the different assets that have been installed in your tenant. And finally, the Nurture section shows you the sets of tools that allow you to identify and support the makers in your environment. I can navigate this dashboard either by selecting an option from the dashboard itself or by using this drop-down that goes through and shows me all of the different pages from the dashboard. So for example, if I want to go through and see which environments have been provisioned, then I can simply choose the environments page of the dashboard, and this will show me the trend around the, how those environments are created, what types of apps and cloud flows have been installed. I can also filter the report by choosing the type of environment that I want to see. So for example, if I'm looking for developer environments or Dataverse for Teams environments, I can filter those environment types here. There's also a standard report that shows me the capacity that's consumed across my environments, showing me Teams environments, developer environments, and my non-default environments. These are just two of the myriad reports available to you to allow you to see the inventory of the applications, flows, and other assets inside of your tenant. 
As I mentioned earlier, the COE starter kit includes a set of out-of-band processes. These out-of-band processes include a Dataverse for Teams approval process, as we discussed earlier. Once installed and configured, a user creating a Dataverse for Teams environment will be given the opportunity to provide a business justification for the creation of that environment, and the administrator can decide whether to keep the environment or allow the COE starter kit process to delete the environment. In addition, we've included a sample environment provisioning workflow. A user will load the environment provisioning power app and request an environment, and can also specify for how long they wish to use the environment. They can also specify the connectors that they need to use for the tasks that they need to perform. The administrator can evaluate these requests, can see which policies need to be applied to the environment in order to allow the maker to do their work, and then can provision the environment and apply the appropriate policy from their provisioning dashboard. You can also use the Center of Excellence Starter Kit to set capacity limits that are soft limits for each of your environments. These soft limits are evaluated by a workflow in the CUE Starter Kit, and the administrators of the environments are warned when they are beginning to reach the capacity. This gives you the opportunity to take action before environments go over the allocated capacity. The Power Platform empowers your users to create their own Power Apps and Cloud Flows. Many times these are experimental or educational, and those things are abandoned or left behind. The Power Platform's COE Starter Kit provides some workflows that evaluate these orphaned objects and give you the option of deleting them or archiving them. In addition, there's a process you can enable which will look at flows that have not been run for an extended period of time and give you the opportunity to archive these flows rather than have them continue showing up in your inventory. Let's take a high level look at the steps required to configure the COE Starter Kit. In order to install the Starter Kit, you'll first need to download it from GitHub. We made this easy with an AKA MS link that takes you directly to the GitHub repository and allows you to download the latest version of the Starter Kit. Once you have the kit downloaded, you'll want to create your own administrative production non-default environment and install the starter kit as long as any other processes you use to manage your tenant inside of this environment. You'll want to create a user account that is designated as a service account, which has a per-user license and has permissions to read the Office Security and Compliance Center logs. Once you've completed the installation of the starter kit with this account, you can take away the login locally right to this account so it can simply run all the workflows and inventory processes in the background. Using this account, you'll initially install the core components to get your inventory working. Once installed, you'll go into the solution and find the top level flow that starts the inventory management process and configure it to use a per flow license. Doing this ensures that the flow has sufficient privilege and has sufficient Power Platform requests to complete the inventory. Let's take a quick look at what the environment looks like once all of the COE Starter Kit solutions have been installed. You'll notice in the demo tenant, I've created an environment called Center of Excellence. This is a non-default environment, and the Center of Excellence solutions were installed using the service account we discussed earlier. Notice I have the Center of Excellence core components installed and configured to do inventory. In addition, the nurture components are here in order for me to track and support makers, and the governance components are installed to help me monitor and maintain the different assets in my Power Platform tenant. If I open the Center of Excellence core components solution, you can see all the cloud flows that are used to maintain the inventory in the tenant. Specifically, you'll notice the admin sync template, which is the top level flow to which you'll want to install the Perflow license. Today, the COE Starter Kit is your best asset for going in and collecting inventory about your tenant. However, we realize that having you configure a flow to crawl all the inventory data when we have the inventory data is an additional step, which in the long term is not very efficient. So we have in preview an ability for you to begin taking the inventory data directly from your tenant and putting it into an Azure Data Lake. You can use this Azure Data Lake to go through and produce the same types of reports that we are producing today with the CWE Starter Kit. In addition, you have the option of keeping the data for as long as you choose. 
giving you potentially months or years of data to analyze when you begin looking at the consumption in your tenant. During the preview, we're providing your Power Apps app usage data, as well as some of the environment and other data around your users. Once you've configured your Azure Data Lake and you start your initial load, we'll give you all resource inventory and 30 days of usage data, and then we'll begin giving you a daily load with all the changes in usage data from the day before. Once this functionality is out of preview and fully implemented, you'll be able to remove the crawling function from the COE Starter Kit and instead rely on us to provide you with all your telemetry data on a daily basis. In this episode, we showed you how to implement your environment strategy using the Power Platform Admin Center. In addition, we discussed the implementation, management, and support of the COE Starter Kit, which will give you a full view into your Power Platform tenant and the users and applications that have been created and are being maintained inside of the tenant. This is the last episode in the Governance Blueprint series. By now, you should have a basic understanding of the need for governance, how to secure the default environment, how to secure your tenant, how to secure and manage Dataverse for Teams environments, how to develop your environment strategy, and finally, how to implement that strategy and then maintain and monitor your tenant on an ongoing basis. Thank you for taking the time to view this series.